These are the first pictures at the first meeting of the new College of Commissioners that will be ruled by Ursula von der Leyen. Right after her, with a super portfolio including competition and the transition to a cleaner industry, there will be the Spanish socialist Teresa Rivera. She is set to become the second most powerful woman in the EU. One of our main tasks will be transforming the European industry so the EU can reach its 2050 zero emissions target, taking the block from grey to green. I think that it is um, also important to understand that uh, a, um, what we try to do is not to color or switch from a color to another color, but to, to try to identify a, um, in a crystal clear manner a, uh, what it does not harm our ecosystems, our environments, and how we can do it in a way that, from an economic and social perspective, a, uh, makes sense. However, her long career as a climate change expert and her anti-nuclear stance has granted her some opposition. The EPP wants her mandate to be different from the previous vice president on the green transition. We don't need a second Timmermans. He was pushing things on industry, on SMEs, on farmers, and uh, people were overwhelmed. So we need another attitude. Since 2018, Rivera has been one of the most powerful women in Pedro Sanchez's government in Spain. During her mandate, she negotiated the Iberian exception that allowed Spain and Portugal to limit the price of energy and calendarize the closure of the nuclear plants in Spain. But first, she will have to pass the final exam from the European Parliament like all the other future commissioners. Magnus Brunner will be the Commissioner for Internal Affairs and Migration. Magnus Brunner won't have an easy path to be a part of the European Commission. The current Austrian finance minister was chosen by Ursula von der Leyen to deal with internal affairs and the migration portfolio. But his profile and Vienna's hard line on border controls are a source of worries for many in the European Parliament. First of all, everybody was extremely surprised because his uh, portfolio as finance minister, expert on energy and so on, never he showed up in the topic of uh, migration with some specific knowledge or engagement. Uh, secondly, also the Austrian government made some uh, very non-constructive moves in the last years. Uh, they were not very helpful for the migration pact. Uh, they made a veto on the Schengen enlargement for Romania and Bulgaria, which uh, everybody's saying is extremely counterproductive. Manfred Weber, president of Brunner's European People's Party, on the other hand, defends this pick. Also extremely important issue is to win back control of our, of our borders. To stop illegal migration in Europe is a key demand and that's why good to have EPP there in the lead. For sure the hearing that Brunner will have to face in the European Parliament is going to be a hard one. Socialists, Liberals and Greens will push against a migration policy focused only on strengthening borders and making deals with third parties to take migrants back. Austria has even called for EU funds to be used for fences. But what should never, ever happen is, not under, is, is the undermining of our fundamental values and human rights. That's at the core and should always be at the core of any migration policy and any border policy. Austrians are electing a new parliament on 29th of September, with far-right party FPÖ leading the polls. Which means that if Brunner is finally rejected, the next migration commissioner could come from a different government. The European Union is set to allocate 14 million euros to the Canary Islands to improve their ability to accommodate migrants. The funds will also be used to strengthen support for unaccompanied migrant children and teenagers, many of whom lost their parents during the perilous boat journey from West Africa. EU Commissioner Margarita Skinas made the announcement while on a visit to the islands, where he met with President Fernando Clavijo Batle. Skinas highlighted the enormous pressure faced by Canarian institutions in the face of the growing crisis, while Batle added that Skinas had spoken of unity and solidarity during their meeting. 
Between January and August of this year, the Canary Islands have recorded the arrival of 22,300 migrants, a number which is expected to increase in the coming months. The European Union has begun the process of deducting a 200 million euro fine from Hungary's share of the EU budget after Budapest missed the payment deadline for a second time. Hungary was fined by the EU's top court for breaking the bloc's migration rules by depriving migrants of their right to apply for asylum. When it comes to the 200 million euro fine, um, the 15-day deadline expired um, yesterday. That means that the Commission is, um, in accordance with the applicable rules, moving to what we call the off-setting uh, uh, procedure. So what we are going to do now is to um, deduct the 200 million euro from uh, upcoming uh, payments from the EU budget towards uh, Hungary. The court has also imposed an additional fine of 1 million euros for every day that Hungary fails to comply. In response to the fines, Hungary has threatened to send migrants from its southern border to the EU's headquarters in Brussels. It's also threatened to sue the EU executive to reimburse the cost of protecting the bloc's external border, which the government says has cost roughly 2 billion euros. The European Commission has rebuffed the Dutch government's recent request to secure an opt-out clause from the EU's migration and asylum rules. A Commission spokesperson told reporters in Brussels it had received the Hague's letter penned by the Dutch Minister for Asylum and Migration and that there were no plans currently to provide the exemption. There's no treaty change upcoming, therefore uh, is, is, uh, this is the current situation. We have also uh, taken uh, and welcomed the fact that the Minister has said that they will continue to prioritise the implementation of the pact, which is clearly uh, a priority for the Commission. Marjolaine Faber, the Dutch politician in charge of asylum and migration, wrote the government wanted to drastically reduce the volume of migrants to the Netherlands to deliver better social services. However, the member of the far-right ultranationalist party conceded in the communique that if her request fell on deaf ears, The Hague would continue to uphold the EU's migration rules. Both the Italian and the French defence ministers attended the second day of the European Air and Missile Defence Conference that took place in the Italian capital. The debate over how to better protect European skies against the Russian threats touched on the military, industrial and political aspects in the presence of around 200 military and business leaders. Russia's war in Ukraine has sped up the need to strengthen the defence system across the continent. Along with that, questions have been raised on how to support the European arms industry. But, as Italy's defence minister Crosetto says, it's a race against time. Ensuring the self-reliance of the European defence sector is one of the priorities. A vivere la sfida dei tempi in cui ci è dato di vivere. Siamo lenti e non è un'accusa, come viene spesso mi viene detto alle aziende, è una constatazione. O abbiamo un'industria europea che abbia la capacità europea e non debba difendere da nessuno, oppure non siamo in grado di garantire la difesa del campo. Building a dialogue among key players and connecting them is crucial and it was one of the aims of the conference. Abbiamo una cooperazione tra stati europei, difese europee, industria europea, intanto eliminando tutte le barriere burocratiche che ci fanno perdere tempo. Je pense que cette réflexion stratégique a du bon, elle oblige l'ensemble des acteurs à partager, à discuter, elle permet aussi d'associer étroitement les équipes de l'Alliance Atlantique. Elle permet de nourrir aussi une intimité plus forte entre les industriels et nos soldats. Another conference has already been announced for next year, but the debate is set to continue within European institutions. The EU has just named its first defence commissioner. Bolstering European defence and security is in fact at the heart of the next EU Commission's agenda. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Rome. 
after the escape of five inmates from a Portuguese high-security penitentiary, the Justice Minister announced urgent audits of the security and management systems of the country's 49 prisons. Se nos tivessem ouvido o governo anterior, nós já tínhamos este problema adiantado. Nós sabemos que não há segurança nas cadeias portuguesas em nenhuma cadeia. One of the flaws in security is the deactivation of the watchtowers, which were replaced by a video surveillance system due to lack of personnel. These towers not only observed the prisoners, but also detected any strange movement outside the prison. A periferia tem que ser garantida por matéria humana. Não há volta a dar. A matéria, o, o ser humano tem que estar ali a controlar. E as torres a nível nacional estão quase todas desativadas, porque não há guardas para trabalhar dentro das cadeias. Onde é que se vai buscar? Às torres, ativa-se a torre e mete-se guarda dentro da cadeia. Prison guards have also complained about being assigned multiple responsibilities for which they have not been trained. Não há guardas, não há viaturas, não há, as infraestruturas estão degradadas, o sistema prisional está obsoleto. Nós continuamos a dizer que não podemos estar, não podemos, é o único país da Europa que juntou a parte punitiva com a reinserção. Nós não podemos juntar quem, uma, uma força de segurança com a reinserção, porque nós não somos, nós somos guardas prisionais, somos, a nossa profissão é garantir a segurança dos estabelecimentos prisionais e não reinserir os presos na sociedade. A este problema cresce ainda a sobrelotação das prisões. Dados de 2023 mostram que a ocupação está acima de 90% e já considerada de alto risco. Acima do limite estão 24 estabelecimentos prisionais, entre os quais o do Porto. Joana Mourão Carvalho, para a Euronews, em Lisboa.